Bash scripting is a convenient way to automate things on any Linux system. And today, we're going to use it to learn how to automate certain tasks that we use all the time on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Bash scripting is a simple language for stringing together various different powerful Linux utilities. And it's this power and simplicity that lets beginners really use it to make a lot of things that would be pretty complicated and require some programming skill relatively simple. Now, if you know the right bash commands, you can do all sorts of things. And today, we're going to focus on a couple commonly used things and automate them with bash scripts. We're also going to do a little bit of aliasing, and this is just to make things more convenient. So if we have something we want to do, we're going to just use a alias to call a bash script and have it run all sorts of things for us instead of having to actually run and call the script every time from wherever we're saving it. Now, in order to follow along, you'll need either an Ubuntu or a Kali Linux system. Really, any Linux system will do, and that is all. So if you want to pick up a Linux system and you've never tried this before, you can always grab a Raspberry Pi, which you can find in the link below. Once you have a Linux system, then we're ready to begin. Today, we're going to get started learning about bash scripting and also a little bit about aliasing. And what I mean by that is we're going to be using bash scripting to basically duct tape together a bunch of Linux applications and use aliasing to make it so it's possible to run them with a single command. Now to get started, we can go ahead and run which bash. And if we are running this in a terminal window, we should see, uh, in my case, bin bash. This will tell us which bash interpreter we're using. And it's also useful information for writing our first bash script. So once we have the location of our bash interpreter, we can go ahead and copy this. And let's go ahead and make our first bash script. So I'm going to type ls. You can see I actually already have a bash script here. It's the .sh script. But that's an advanced one I've been working on. So let's go ahead and start a new one by typing nano, and we'll just type for now bash.sh. And you can name this whatever you want, but it does need to be named .sh. So we'll go ahead and then add the signatory character that says this is where we're going to be running an interpreter. So in this case, we're going to be doing the shebang and then bin slash bash. And that basically lets this program know immediately when it's opened uh, how to interpret the language we're going to be writing in. OK, so we have a very basic bash file. Uh, it identifies itself as a bash file. And then there's nothing. So let's go ahead and actually create a variable and then have something happen. So we can create variables similar to many programming languages. Let's say in this case, I want to just make string. We can have string equals null byte. And then we can echo something back. So let's say, so hackers love to learn on. And then we want to use the variable. So in bash scripting, we'll use a dollar sign and then the variable name. Now we'll go ahead and, oops, this is not Python. We'll go ahead and just use a quote uh, to close that out. And this should be everything we need in order to create our first bash script. So let's take a look at what we're doing. We're just creating a variable saving the name null byte, we're, and then we're echoing this back. So we're just saying, go ahead and repeat this back to me. But instead of repeating it back literally, it's going to swap in the string we just created. So let's press Control X in nano, Y to confirm, enter. And now we'll go ahead and try to run this bash file. So we'll type bash bash dot sh, and let's see if it works. Hackers love to learn on null byte. Sweet. OK, so now that's a little bit of very, very basic bash scripting we've been able to, to basically test whether or not we can create a variable. So the result was we were able to get something back that wasn't originally what we passed. So we were able to get this variable printed back to us. OK, so that's pretty cool. But what else can we do here? Now let's go ahead and go back into the bash script. So we'll nano back into it. And instead of assuming that there is a string that is existing already in the program, let's say that we want to pass variables into it. So when we run this bash script, we want to be able to supply a couple variables and have them be a part of our script. So here, we're going to go ahead and basically fill in the blank and say, I firmly believe that $1 $1 is the best $2 two for the office of dollar sign three. And this is all within some quotes. So what do these dollar signs mean? 
Well, basically these dollar signs are popping a variable into place anytime that we add something to the end of the bash script when we run it. So let me show you what that means. So we've put in a dollar sign here, a dollar sign here, and one here, and these are actually positional. So if I run this bash.sh and I put a word here, a word here, and then a word here, you should see them just automatically appear when this is echoed back in this place, this place, and this place. And you can swap them around however you want. The dollar sign one just means it's the first position, the dollar sign two means it's the second, and the dollar sign three means it's the third. So let's see if this actually works. We'll go ahead and press Control X again, Y to save, and we'll then try to run this. But we will say, let's say, firm and supreme. And there we go. As soon as I echo this back, I've supplied three different variables, and I can see now it says, I firmly believe that Vermin Supreme is the best candidate for the office of president. Wow, our script has the preference. I don't endorse that, but that's a really interesting opinion. So as you can see, bash scripting is a really easy way to take in a couple things like variables and distribute them throughout your script so that you can adapt to something that might be maybe piped in from another script or otherwise selected by the user. Now, the next thing we want to do is take advantage of the ability to actually create something inside the script that depends on another tool being run. So let's go back into our script. We'll nano into it. And let's say that in addition to, uh, actually, let's replace this. We want to print something that is the result of something being run. So we want to echo, let's say, uh, we're going to say dollar sign. And then if we put a pair of parentheses, anything that happens in here will basically be popped out and run. So I can even do something like if config. So what this should do is echo the result of the if config command. So I'm actually not going to run that because then we'll have to blur it. I'll just do the who am I, control X, Y, and let's go ahead and run this again. And what we should see isn't literally just that thing we typed uh, spelled out, we should see the result of the command instead be printed. So we'll do bash bash.sh and we can see it runs the who am I command and just runs that instead. So that's pretty cool. What about interactivity? Well, bash scripting has that down as well. We can go back here and we can say instead we want to echo something first. So we'll echo what is your name? And then we're going to read name, and this is a variable. And then we're going to echo, wow, dollar sign name sounds like a punk. I don't think I've made any mistakes. We'll see in just a second. Save this. And now what we've done here is add a little bit of interaction. So let's say I don't, I'm not going to pass this bash script. I want to make it more interactive for the person using it. I can run the bash script and it demands, what is your name? Cody. Wow, Cody sounds like a punk. Well, I mean, step off bash script. So we've now created an argumentative bash script that can take in something and insult us. But obviously this is uh, far more applicable if we want to be putting in a variable like maybe where a particular interface is, or if we want to select which uh, port our Arduino is connected to. I've used bash scripting for flashing a whole bunch of different dauthor boards all at the same time. And the way that it works is by first selecting which port they're connected to. So this is critical for creating your own bash scripting tools. Now, finally, we're going to go into something a little bit more advanced, which is if statements. So we can use conditional statements to basically put controls in our program so we can see whether or not something exists or if it matches a certain value. So let's say we want to change this a little bit and we want to see whether or not that person is actually putting in a name or if there's nothing there. So this is a pretty common example. We can just basically verify that something, uh, you know, has been entered correctly in the script. So if we type if, and then we're going to use a bracket, dollar sign name, then another bracket, uh, semicolon, then, oops, and then we will do something. So let's say we echo name sounds. So basically now, if uh, something exists in this variable, then it's going to echo that that person sounds okay to me. 
And then we can also put in an else condition. And this will basically be if there's nothing inside this variable. Doesn't sound like anything to me. All right. So this is the flow of our program. We demand a name. We read the name. If they type something in the name, then it says that that name sounds all right to me. Otherwise, it's going to say doesn't sound like anything to me. Let's go ahead and test it. Ask the name. It looks like there's a problem. Line nine, unexpected end of file. Oh, we forgot one important part. So this is really good. If you get this error, then this is what you did. So when you are doing loops, they don't end automatically. You have to actually end them manually. So I forgot to type two letters, just two letters, fee. So I'm going to go ahead and add fee, press X, Y to save it. Let's go ahead and run this again. Cody sounds all right to me. Now let's run it one more time. This time I'm going to type nothing. Doesn't sound like anything to me. Now you can see here that the script is reacting to, to me. I've been able to actually change it and I'll go back to the script so you can see it. I've been actually to able to change it so that now depending on the input it's given, it is able to react to that. And this is really important if you want to start using bash scripting to do things that are more advanced. Now, I'm not going to get too much more into this script or make it much longer. Instead, I'm going to show you some command line things that are also relevant to bash scripting and are super easy. So let's say that we just want to learn something about this computer and we don't want to pipe through a whole bunch of different output. If I were to just type ifconfig, I would get a whole big long string of stuff that I'm not that interested in. But if I actually identify something that is maybe more unique to a particular line I'm interested in, let's say, let's try something. I, if I want to narrow this down, I can use the pipe symbol, which is right here, and send all of this input to a program that's going to filter through it called grep. So I will type grep, and then the pattern I'm looking for. In this case, I'll try broadcast. If I press enter, I can see that I've identified my IP address is basically in the string that uniquely has the word broadcast in it. So here, let's say that I really want to find my IP address in one command. I basically want to um, create uh, something that gives me my current IP address on the network in a single command rather than typing ifconfig and digging through this big long mess of stuff. So I'm going to clear this. And if we take a look at the last command, I can type ifconfig and pipe it into grep broadcast. And this is a little bit of bash scripting that then gives me almost what I want. Still a line, not everything's relevant, but the answer is in there. So I'm just going to expand on this. And this is why bash scripting is kind of the duct tape of Linux. We're going to go ahead and add awk, which will allow us to select any of these words. We're going to uh, add a single quote put it inside a uh, bracket, a type print. And then in this case, it's the second word. So dollar sign two, and then another bracket to close and then a quote. And let's go ahead and see if this will give us what we want. There we go. So what have we done here? We've taken the output of one command and passed it through two filters in order to get the exact result that we want. And now we're at the point where let's say we want to save this. I don't want to have to type all this big long uh, command every time that I want to see my IP address. Let's say that I really want to instead copy this and be able to use it whenever I want it in a single command. Well, that is where we get into aliasing. And this is the best part of developing a really good bash script. I can go ahead and type alias. What is my IP or IP address? And then equals. And I can go ahead and put the bash script in here. So this is awesome. And you do need to be careful of the quotes because double and single quotes can mess this up. You can see I have double and single quotes kind of separated here. So if I go ahead and press enter, I should be able to type IP address. Now, as you can see here, this failed initially, but there is a way to be able to make this work. So if I go back up to this command and instead, I am going to change this slightly. I'm going to alias uh, IP address or just what is my IP address? A little lot longer, but that's fine. And now we're going to change this just a bit so that we don't run into the same problem that we get when we just echo this directly. So I'm going to echo dollar sign. And then remember, this is the way that we basically have all of this run before we print it. 
let's go ahead and add another uh, parentheses here. And let's see if this now works. So we'll now type, what is my IP address? And there we go, it works. A little bit of a struggle, but as you can see, it does matter to learn a little bit about the things we just did. In this case, knowing about the dollar sign here and then making this command run first before we print it is what got us around this issue, which by the way, frustrated me for a good hour the other day, that uh, came about when trying to automate the process of simply typing in a single word and getting back the result of your current IP address. So this has been a brief bash scripting intro. There's lots of stuff you can do with this, but in general, this is a great way to get started automating just about anything you want to do in Linux. Bash scripting is an incredibly useful skill to learn. And in general, you don't need to know a lot about programming to duct tape together a lot of different Linux applications and make something that actually works in order to get a prototype up and running. Now, if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article link in the description. And if you want to check out more articles like this, make sure to check out lots of different content on the Nullbyte website as well. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.